Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us, we want you, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left hand in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. <clears throat> then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or my left hand is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them. And their great ones are tyrants over them, but it is not so among you. But whoever, but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the Gospel. Of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. We're almost to the finish line for this church year, this liturgical year B, where we have been uh, hanging out in the book of Mark and a large detour in the Easter season in the Gospel of John. And it's been a long season of Pentecost, much like the long, warm summer that we had this year, but just like the change, the sudden change in the weather, we are about to have a sudden change in the liturgical calendar, and Advent's going to be around the corner, and it's going to be here faster than what we anticipate. We're talking about God here, though, who knows no time or space, as we approach this changing of season in our human lens. The Gospel of Mark delivers to us that living gospel of Jesus Christ. The living gospel of Jesus Christ. Remember how Mark starts, this is only the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, God's only Son. And that's how he begins his story. And as we've witnessed this past year, that gospel comes fresh and new to us each and every day. And that good news of Jesus Christ really has no beginning and it has no ending. As we approach Advent, which will be the first weekend in December, and as we enter into St. Luke's story of the good news, we will witness angels. And you know, this morning in the hymn of praise, we had a piece of that. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Comes right out of Luke chapter 2, when the angels, the good news deliverers, that's what angel, evangelical, that's what, what the Greek word for uh, evangelism, good news, is angel or good news deliverer. That's what those angels were declaring, that this good news is for all people. And that means us, too. And that means the other, as well. It's for all people. Back to St. Mark. The Revised Common Lectionary does a pretty good job of feeding us the Gospel Scriptures in order, but occasionally, for mostly good reasons, the lectionary skips around for festivals and whatnot. So today we continue in Mark chapter 10, where we've been hanging out, as I said earlier. But I want to remind you of Mark chapter 9, and please, 
I encourage you to check this out when you get home today. Check out Mark chapter 9 and 10. Check out all of the book of Mark if you'd like. But to see this order that we've been going in the scripture, and you will find that in chapter 9, we have the transfiguration of Jesus Christ. Now, we heard about the transfiguration back in February, um, and that we celebrated that then. So, at the transfiguration of Christ, Jesus is standing with his disciples at the top of the mountain, when suddenly he is miraculously transfigured into a form that the disciples have never witnessed before. The disciples may have been standing close to Jesus, perhaps on his right hand and his left hand. Did you hear that? But suddenly that timeless attribute of God, the Alpha and Omega, the one who knows no time or space boundaries, was joined on the right and the left hand by some pillars of the faith, Moses and Elijah. And these startled disciples who probably thought that they had seen about everything possible out of Jesus, got a huge glimpse of who the pillars were of the faith. Or perhaps in their limited human vision, they interpreted it this way. Continue on in Mark chapter 9 and Mark chapter 10. While this is, and Jesus and the disciples are continuing to walk the pathways together. And the writer of the Gospel of Mark uses his priceless storytelling technique. Now, I call them sandwiches. Some people like to call the stories being bookended on a bookshelf. But the storytelling technique is where um, Mark gives us a piece of bread, a story on one side of a group of gospel experiences, and then in the middle is what I call the meat. He brings in the, the meat stories, and then he brings in another slice of bread to complete the sandwich. And that other slice of bread has a truth that ties the whole sandwich together. In all of that meat portion of the sandwich, Jesus is showing his disciples who it is that sits on the right and left hand. On the one side, the bread is the transfiguration of Christ, and on the other side, hold on, and I'll give that to you in a minute. His, he often mentions that the little children in this middle meat section, he, he says that of such is the kingdom of God, the least of these are part of the kingdom of God. And we hear that a lot in the book of Mark. The first will be last, and the last will be first. There is talk in this meat section about who is the greatest. Remember the disciples asked who was the greatest. And again we find Jesus responding that the greatest are those who give of themselves, those who trust God, those who do not try to pull themselves up by their own strength in life and their vocation, by their own bootstraps, but trust in God to take them up and strengthen them daily and take them out of their comfort zone and faith steps and follow Jesus into the unknown. Those who sit on Jesus' right and left hand, his advisors, his chief of staff, his secretary of state, his administrative assistant, are those who are self-sacrificing and not self-serving. Those who would invite the least popular, the weakest in the opinion of the populace, lift them up on the seat of power with Jesus, making sure that the least of these become the greatest of these. The disciples have seen all of this. They listen to Jesus' teaching. At first glance, they appear to not get it. But as one commentator that I read this week in preparation for the sermon wrote, the disciples actually may have gotten it with their response. They asked Jesus, 
after seeing all that Jesus does and hearing about the meat of the kingdom of God in the middle, they ask if they can be on his left hand and his right hand in the kingdom, if they can play a huge role in this kingdom of God thing. What is it you want me to do for you? The disciples asked Jesus for these leading roles. Jesus responds, you don't know the full extent of what you're asking for. And of course, St. Mark sets that teaching scene for Jesus. Jesus says there's a lot of sacrifice involved. And Jesus tells once again, perhaps the third time in the section of the Gospel of Mark, of his upcoming ultimate sacrifice. Jesus will continue to rule his kingdom. Again, the refreshing good news of the Son of God. He will continue to rule just as he did before he became flesh and was born in Bethlehem. Just as he did when he ruled this world in that humble manger. Jesus will eventually walk to Jerusalem, be handed over, and he will rule his kingdom in humility, nailed to a Roman cross. And get this, as he hangs on that cross, visualize this, after drinking of the cup, he again not only invites the least of these into his kingdom, but right there, right there on his left hand, in his right hand, as he rules, is the very least of these two common thieves. Two common thieves being crucified with him. And Jesus will continue to rule his kingdom from a humanly sealed rock enclosure, a tomb, a piece of his own creation sealed by the hands of his own creation. Death will not keep him down, and he will rise to new life, which once again is only the beginning of the good news. Now back to the disciples. They did witness all of these moments with Jesus. They actively participate in ministry with Jesus. They are on the right and left hand of God. They help the little children up into Jesus' arms. They help distribute bread and fish in their own hands. They watch that food being miraculously multiplied. They often find themselves in between Jesus and danger, just as much as they find themselves at times distanced from Jesus because of their own shortcomings. The disciples are broken creation, just like you and me. They witness the final piece of this sandwich today and the scriptures that follow today's text. Now, it will be important for you to read these texts because of the upcoming weekend. This next weekend is Reformation Day. So we are going to skip these scriptures in Mark chapter 10. A man is at the gates of the city outside of Jerusalem, and he is obnoxiously crying out to Jesus as Jesus and the disciples pass by him. He's acknowledging, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And he cries out again, and people sternly order him to be quiet. And he cries out to Jesus a total of three times. Finally, Jesus tells his disciples, those who are on his right and his left hand in ministry, to go get Bartimaeus, who's sitting at the gate. And Bart springs up, he's losing his cloak in the process. And he, he stands up and he approaches Jesus. And Jesus asks him that very same question that he asked his disciples earlier. What is it you want me to do for you? I 
want to see again. Jesus responds, go, then your faith has made you well. And Bart is not only made whole, but he doesn't listen exactly to Jesus who says, go, Bart follows Jesus. Bart becomes a part of this ministry of the left hand and the right hand. The good news of Jesus Christ is that no matter who we are, whatever shape that we are in, and where we are on the pathway of life, God's resurrection power will work through us. We are invited to serve God at God's right and left hand. We're invited to be God's hands and God's feet in this world, using the simple gifts that God has given us, standing there with bread and fish in our hands, surrounded by hungry people up to our chin in chaos or swallowed up in way too much silence in our own lonely hours. There we are either lifting up others onto the throne of God or taking that step up to God's left and right hand as Jesus beckons us to come. There we are knowing that God can make the impossible possible. Like the disciples witnessing the transforming power of the good news as it flows through us, as we show up expecting God to be God. There we are believing that God uses the least of these to do his work in the world. We will be celebrating God's amazing grace this fall in the next couple of months, and we're going to name the ways that God calls us to be his hands and his feet in this world. We're going to name specifically the ways that St. Matthew in its ministries is actually being God's left and right hand people. We give God thanks for the good news and for working through us. I saw firsthand this past week one of the ways that St. Matthew is God's hands and God's feet in this world in a very real way that is very hard to describe. I sat with Richard Johnson this week and prayed with him and there was a moment when he told me about the card that he received from the congregation. There was a God moment there that just floored me. It was as if this man, when he told me how he had received this card and read this card and how thankful it was for him, his face glowed and it was as if he had seen God himself in that good news delivery. And that, that is because this congregation, that is because God works through this congregation, through the card writing, through the signatures. His actual exclamation was, all those signatures hanging there. And it was a moment in which he had seen God, and he saw God the work that was done here. Thanks be to God for the ways that God calls us to do his ministry, the way God calls us to be on his left and his right hand. And thanks be to God through God's amazing grace that God calls us and thinks enough of us to bear that news ourselves. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.